John, I'm going to interrupt myself here to report that we just heard from Mission Control in Houston that separation has taken place. Uh, they have turned around or are taking that look at the uh, now separated third stage, and everything is going still as it has all morning, uh, absolutely the way it was planned. Very good. Fine. Nominal mission. Uh, the, uh, uh, what I was saying was that while we have all these serious problems, something we should not forget is that if we had planned in advance, uh, done some, some grand strategic uh, thinking about the problems we face now, we wouldn't be in quite the same crisis we are in at this very moment on air and water pollution, on birth control. Uh, these things are, are uh, critical. Uh, at the moment. The famine uh, is sweeping down on us uh, in the world and the food supply. Uh, if there had been some planning, perhaps this had not taken place. If you don't plan. Of you. Yeah. Well, glad to join you. <laughs> well, this is almost as much of a breakthrough as getting that rocket up this morning. Uh, you look fine. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, but but th this was the point I was making anyway, that uh, that uh, that it's advanced planning that pays off. You can't uh, just start and stop these uh, research programs. And, uh, and while uh, certainly there have to be some very careful thinking of priorities here, given to space. Well, let me, let me uh, comment on that, Walter. The, no one, certainly in the space program, would, would want to say that uh, if, if money that has been taken from here could really solve some of these other problems, that it, it shouldn't go ahead and be spent there. The thing that I come back to, though, I hope that we don't, that we are not losing this emphasis on research and, and uh, exploration and the curiosity about the unknown that I think has made this country what it is. Uh, I think when we have a better handle on, on some of the, the drain of Vietnam with 30 billion a year and some of these other things that are major problems right now, uh, that we get back to a little more, uh, a little better level of funding for research and things such as the space program. I think some comparisons on these, uh, I believe as a percent of our gross national product, we're down now in, in support of this space area to about one half of one percent of our gross national product, which is usually used as a measure of what we're able to do in this country in various fields. Uh, the Russians, as a contrast to that, go somewhere between one and a half to two percent of their gross national product. Well, this would indicate that as a people, they're putting forth uh, some four times the effort into their program uh, as we are. And, and I don't know whether they see this only as a military or propaganda gain, uh, but I don't think we can afford to lag in these areas that the rest of the world is going to, to uh, tend to follow as uh, technological leaders emerge, whether it be Russia or America. John, I'd like to come back in just a moment. Uh, if you have a few more minutes, don't go away. Uh, and we'll be back uh, very shortly. CBS News color coverage of the flight of Apollo 8 will continue in a moment after this pause for station identification. The flight of Apollo 8 continues after this pause for station identification. This is CBS. CBS News color coverage of the flight of Apollo 8, brought to you by Western Electric, continues. Well, John Glenn in Houston, I, uh, I just wanted to uh, not go away without a proper goodbye, as Sir Bernard Lovell would probably put it. Uh, well, I'm glad that, uh, that uh, Sir Bernard had been misquoted, he says, or quoted out of context. He does seem to have come around uh, perhaps in the enthusiasm over the success of Apollo 8. And, uh, and this is something that uh, I know that all of the space program have been hoping for in this country as well as elsewhere, that there would be, uh, by the uh, example of this flight, a demonstration of the great adventure out there in space, which eventually can pay off for man here on Earth. Walter, I was very glad to hear his uh, statement on that, too, because I, I think he was, uh, if it was taken out of context, ...around the world as a preeminent expert, of course, in this area, and has done such wonderful work there at Jodrell Bank that I was, I was glad to uh, hear him correct that. I think 
in support of some of his area there in, in radio astronomy and things like that. Because as people see these things unfolding, they tend to support other research such as his. Uh, so I our benefits to uh, his area and to the unmanned area, which uh, I think there will always be uh, a tendency to use as much unmanned information and uh, the information from the radio astronomers as much as possible before man goes out into these new areas. That's only common sense. So I think there's a whole upgrading of science effort when you have a, a pinnacle of attention such as you have in this man program. I think oftentimes, too, this feeds over into other areas. People think uh, when they get used to thinking big in a science area, maybe they, they think that other things uh, possibly are not too big to consider and think about, too, such as uh, uh, can we solve some of our social problems? And they, they tend to think more widely, and I think there's a, a, a general uh, influence, possibly, that goes far beyond just the scientific influence in the space program. Yes, if we can get to the moon, John, we ought to be able to bring in your picture. From history. And the people at we enjoyed our visit there very much. Same to you. CBS News. California, Madrid, and uh, in Australia. Uh, they will keep in touch with the uh, spacecraft. Although the Earth is revolving, they are so placed one-third away around the Earth, each of them, that uh, one will always be facing the spacecraft and in direct touch with it, except when the spacecraft on its 10 orbits of the moon is behind the moon for about 45 minutes out of each uh, two-hour orbit of the moon. The men are just about now about to take off their uh, space suits. Uh, they will fly the rest of this mission, including re-entry in a shirt sleeve envi environment. They have on long johns, which they keep on for the full six days of the mission, but they'll put flight coveralls on over that uh, to be perfectly comfortable for the rest of the flight. They will be busy on these two and a half days out to the moon. They will take photographs. They will practice navigational uh, procedures uh, with star sights and moon and earth sights. Uh, they will be rotating their spacecraft uh, to equalize the 450 degrees of heat from the sun coming from the right of the spacecraft as it proceeds toward the moon. Uh, they, uh, they must equalize that heat so it isn't all on one side of the spacecraft with the other side in the dark, 450 degrees below zero. Uh, so they'll be rolling over once every hour, just about at the speed of the hands of a clock. Uh, that's called the barbecue mode by the astronauts. They'll have a routine of 17 hours on duty and seven hours of sleep on the two and a half day flight out to the moon. The uh, uh, two of the astronauts will be up at one time and uh, the commander will sleep uh, uh, alone and will be up alone. They will all be up, all three, for all of the principal maneuvers. I'm about to leave now for our New York Space Headquarters. My colleague Steve has the flights of Apollo 8 continue. Report on the historic flight in 90 minutes. This is Walter Cronkite at the CBS News Space Center. This has been a CBS News special report. The flight of Apollo 8.